the, um, in the, some of the Meyer insurances, we've got a non non medical, non health. Mm -hmm. terms what looks like a four hundred thousand dollar ish issue could be a three hundred thousand dollar ish issue. Um, well we'll have a discussion with Masco about their capital article, which would help that. Yeah, matter. and then you know be the digitization projects another eighty seven thousand I don't know if there's a spring. Well if we go for the cap yeah, the, the capital articles. Part of the yeah. issue, though, mm -hmm. is that we have the free cash for the one-time things. Yeah, that's a philosophical And, and you know, how much of it do you use to reduce the tax levy? Sure. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I took a look. If you look back 10 years, you know, we've the average over those 10 years, we've used almost 300000 against the tax levy, if you look at it as a percentage of, right. as a percentage of the tax levy, it's pushing 400000 for this year, so it's not crazy to do that, and I think okay, well, we're, we're within yeah. shouting distance of balancing, right. and oh. we can also... Yeah. D depending on how things break, and yeah. also depending on how much you want to contribute to the stabilization funds OPEB. and OPEB, which yeah. I think Chase wanted to talk about. Yeah. Which you brought it up last week. Right. So I think it's a good long-term, short-term discussion. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, because this year we do have free cash right. um, that could be tucked into something like OPEB where it will earn interest. Yeah. We've talked in the past about, well, okay, if the debt's gone up, you know, for sixty or eighty thousand dollars trying to finish that climb up the mountain. Excuse me, do we just take some that amount of free cash extra and throw it against that? We could yeah. debate about whether this year's extraordinary special special ed cost jump is something we could pretend is one time. Okay. So maybe we should have a discussion on uses of some large free cash. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, but what you're having, but maybe we can write it down. That's our discussion that was going to take place that last night. We're up yeah. late trying to figure out right. what do we actually do. Yeah. But the problem is, I think we need <clears throat> four or five or six more firmer numbers before right. we know what we're really solving for, yeah. so we can then figure out right. what goes on what. Yeah. Yeah. The other question to think about right now, state aid is fixed at level with our FY18 assumption, which was set at the FY17 actual. So we could update to the FY18 actual, which I think is, if I read things right, it's about $40,000 more. And that might be conservative enough. The governor's budget for FY19 gives us even more, another 40000 on top of that. But until the state's finished all its machinations in the House, and the state Senate, uh, I don't know how far we want to go with that, because the state's probably feeling poor. But maybe. Yeah, Increasing that assumption is probably worth it. We have to debate about how much. Yeah. And then making sure that the estimated local receipts number, which is up, is right. Oh, are you going to report it? Yes. I'm sorry. want to announce that. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought I told you that when I came in with it, yeah, I was going to. Yeah, I didn't realize you sorry, came back with sorry. it. I didn't, I didn't even know. I, I just thought it was You were so yeah. engrossed. <laughs> yeah. So you guys will do the usual that yes. now, since I obviously don't. I know. So the schools are here, although it's yeah. nine minutes early. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think enough, yes. Okay. Well, do you think we're likely to get people who were anxious for the schools but won't show up until 8? I don't know. Superintendent of schools is up in the office. Yeah. Um, I, <coughs> I don't know how problematic that is. Given the, the attendance at the school committee meetings, I would say no. <laughs> Since there weren't people there? There weren't people there, right. I see. <laughs> well, there was a couple, but yes. Yeah. Okay, so the places that we should look for the future meetings, Thursday night and Monday night, are, are the local receipts assumption reasonable? Can we bump the state? receipts up by 40,000 to be consistent with fiscal 18 actual. And then when we're coming down to the wire, how much do we put in the various stabilization funds? Ch Chase back in the envelope was more like three to 500k per year to open. <laughs> right. To mean to keep the to, same to amount to, to, to tread water. Uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. But he, he hadn't done enough work, and the actuaries hadn't done enough work. Okay. But he's working on that. I don't so, know if he has an update on that. But. So 100000 it's a nice token, but right. that we're, needs to we're increase. sinking. That's, yes, we're moving the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. And given what we've read about what the state Correct. has for its obligations that it hasn't fulfilled, they're, they're not a magic source of money to fix mm -hmm. our problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad people don't need money for OPEP in their wills. Only to George Gould, who cares about OPEP. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got enough of the schools? Yeah. Do mm -hmm. you guys mind starting Not at all. five minutes Be happy to early? Um, I think. We've got a reasonable crowd, so. Sure. Steve, you can sit next to me if you want. That's always going to show up. Well, take care. I won't find it. Well, thank you. 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 I can bring a chair over too. This is easy enough. not familiar, we've got uh, Chairman Ross from the uh, school committee, we've got Katrina on the school committee as well, and we've got Superintendent Morrison and Mr. Clifford Buildings, I forget your official title, Superintendent, how's that? <laughs> um, so thank you for coming in tonight. Um, maybe later we just start off with just a quick update. I know we've been guiding that you're going to hit guidelines and, and I believe you've officially taken action on that. Maybe just give the committee a quick update on that. Sure. And then there's an update on the school envelope project. Yes, thank you. Um, so as John noted, uh, the school committee has been active in trying to um, ensure that our FY19 budget comes within the um, guidelines set forth by FinCon. So um, as of our March 2nd meeting, we made appropriate actions to achieve that uh, percentage that we've been uh, allotted. Um, so this is the adjusted budget sheet that um, we will take. We'll certify at our April meeting, um, which is April 5th, I believe. Yeah. Um, so as you oh. see, we, we do Thank a you. number of cuts to the budget. Um, and we are now at 3.59%, and that's the 3% plus the um, one-time special ed extraordinary costs. So the number you're seeking for, there's a little delta that I noticed is the 28900 versus the 281176. So it's $276 under guideline? Is that, is that the right way? That's okay. 
Yeah, possibly. 281.176. And you guys, you guys took action on 28900. Correct. Okay. 28900. Yeah. I just want to make sure when when we vote that we're voting on that. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions from the committee members on that topic? The chances that your extraordinary special number will get smaller. Yeah, in the next week or two? Yeah, good question. Uh, that's something that we budget for based on current conditions, and we have no indication that that will be um, It does change, you know, as you know, Karen, having done this it, year over year, you budget, and it can be a boom bust. You know, it can be a year where you may have a student that you budget for that moved out, um, and then you, you know, you have a uh, favorable circumstance, and then you may have a situation where, as we talked about last meeting, Thinking about that special ed reserve fund down the road, where you may have a student uh, that moves into the district, and then having a little bit of wiggle room within that special ed reserve fund that's uh, available to us now through the memory. So that's something I think as we continue to meet over the you know next year or so, further conversation around that might be a, might, be a, not, not, might not be a bad idea. A, a question I had just for the group, and we've all talked about this a bit offline, um, but uh, we we know. Last time you were all here in front of us, we appreciate that discussion and a preview into some of the needs down the road, the classroom of the future, yep. education, et cetera. Uh, were we, I, I, it feels like we were unable to bake in any more technology cost in the base budget. Correct. Um, so I guess the flip side of the quick question I'd like to ask, the technology is so important, how come we couldn't make room for that in the base budget? Yeah. What cuts would we need to make in order to make technology? Because if we, every year you earmark some dollars toward that, you can get closer to it if it's in the base budget. Yeah. So just to update the group here so we can hear the updates from the discussions you've all had. Sure. Yeah, we were unable to bake it in uh, just based upon current needs we have with staffing. Uh, certainly that's uh, one piece of it, and there were a number of staffing positions that we uh, did not fill uh, through this budget process. And as we came down to the end, uh, we are experiencing a, a higher class size in our uh, fourth grade next year. Our fourth grade classes will be um, up higher at the higher end of things that they've been uh, in many years past. Um, one of the directions that the committee gave us as the leadership team was, can you come in at guideline, can you see if we can get that fourth grade number down? Uh, is there a way to do that? And we were at the point, John, where uh, we'd be, we would have been trading people for people. It was a conversation we had had at this whole committee meeting. It's, there's, there's no supply or this or that that we could you know, trade out to try to fund uh, an additional section. So it would be a program or a person in another program or whatever the case may be. Right, so if you been traded. So this number has a higher than average class size for fourth grade, and if you make the technology, then you would have just more classes with higher than average Correct. class size. Correct. And I think something that we've been talking about on the committee is being mindful of how we ask for what type of technology. And, and it so, needs to fit together and, and it needs to fit Correct. long term yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've all right, we talked about yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I think right now, it's, make sure you get your long term plan set. We want our long term yeah. plan set before we come and start thinking in costs that we, you know, think down the road, oh, if we should have done this. And I think you have a new so. opportunity with, you know, Dr. Morrison being relatively new here in our right, second budget cycle. Yeah. Make sure that he's on board with that new plan with the committee, right? Yeah, we've been working so very, that, very that makes a lot of sense. It does. And we've got a team actually got, uh, made up of, um, you know, members of the school committee, members of the leadership team that's really taking a hard look at that classroom of the future. Yeah. And we're really trying to nail that down. So when we come before this, you know, board in the ensuing years, you know, we have a, we have a good sense of that. Right. We had some great talks at our Saturday budget meeting, you know, that we did earlier this right. year as well. Yeah. Right. Any other questions for other committee members before we move to the part B? So thank, thank you for meeting guideline. I, I was there and witnessed a lot of those discussions. I know it was a tough, painful discussions, and, and uh, you know I, I think just you know in next year's in next year's uh, budget book, like when I see that first book, those you know there's there, there's average class size, mm -hmm. but there's a range in average class size always, right? So let's, let's I want to get to specifics so we can all see like what. what what is our actual average over the last 30 years? What's the low side of the average, the high side of the average? Because everybody understands there's that step function, right? You you add one person, and all of a sudden, those classes go from the high, above the high end to very low end, right? So just getting a, right. a sweet spot. Getting a sweet spot and understanding where we really are on that, because um, 
just wanted to make sure everybody sees exactly where that is as you guys are making your decision. Okay. Okay. We have the data. Yeah, um, we, I can share that spreadsheet. No, no, I, I've, I've seen it. Oh, okay. But I'm okay. just saying in that first binder next year, yeah. like let's see what those actual numbers are. But like looking at the 30 year average, not just there's a couple data points. I, we can talk about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I think that's yeah. super helpful because every sure. time we hear we hear class size every year, and we've heard other non-current committee members say, you know, kind of ringing the alarm that it was on the high end. But when you actually look at it over a long term period, it was still in the average. Sure. So I just want to be sure when we're getting high, are we really above the average or yeah. not? Looking at that data. So I know you guys have it, and I know that's kind of where we're at. But it's a great idea. It'll help with the communication. Yeah. Sure. Right. Great idea. Yeah. Um, the other, oh sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. Go. Um, the other item we wanted to just give a brief update on our MSBA project, the envelope projects, um, just uh, in the area of transparency and what we've been discussing to date. So we did put our um, RFP out for the public for bids. Uh, we received two bids back from contractors for the two projects. Um, our RFPs are unique in that they're two public schools projects that you done in the summertime. So um, we got two very strong bids back, but the lowest bid of the two was still $25,000 over um, what the town had approved at last year's town meeting. Um, and with the uh, priority alternates that we think we really need to implement in the envelope projects, um, the, the gap is about $200,000. Um, and so earlier today, the school committee met and we voted and, to, and approved that we would um, fill or cover the $200,000, up to $200,000 with our FY18 budget. Um, so we would not- FY18 budget. 18 budget, yeah. budget, yes. So we will not come back to the town for the difference, but we will find the funds within our FY18 budget for that coverage. So, so two things on that. We had a quick conversation on that, so <clears throat> just recently. Um, how many bids were you expecting to get, and then how many did you get and why? A little color on that. And then the other color is explain where you're going to find these funds from, from last year's fiscal budget. Go ahead, take Steve, take the bid one first. Yeah, so on the, on the bids, um, so the way it works is we, we have to bid the filed sub-bid trades uh, two weeks ahead of the general bids. So these are all trades that have scope values in excess of $25,000. Um, so when that occurred, um, all those bids were coming in pretty much on target. Uh, our consultants liked what, what they were seeing. Uh, they were certainly on estimate and budget. Uh, then what happens is the general bids is about a two week delay. Um, we had a project walkthrough, very well attended. I think we had in excess of 30 people. 30 uh, different firms? Yeah, that, uh, that attended the I don't know if there were exactly 30 firms, but I mean, it was probably 30 bodies. You know, okay, right, right. So maybe we'll, it's we'll call it 20, more than 25. Two. Sure. <clears throat> so it was very well attended, a lot of interest. Um, then what they do is they basically, uh, the way the mass law works, is they pick up uh, the low uh, filed sub bid in each trade and incorporate that those bids into their general bid. Uh, and then when it comes time for general bid, they submit theirs. So when we had, when we received the general bids, we had uh, a total of two bids. Uh, number two bid came in about three hundred thousand over over number one bid, um, and number one bid came in at twenty five thousand uh, over over base budget. So, um, so, so <coughs> was, was two? Were you expecting two, or were you expecting more? Um, I mean, we we were. A, optimistically and hopeful that we would see more but frankly the construction market's red hot um, and really it's a it's a contractors market they can pick and choose projects based on their their portfolio and the, the scope and the geography of the projects and the time duration um, these aren't these probably aren't the easiest projects on the street you know available to contractors um, you know they're all school projects are aggressive uh, they have their issues of mobility. Um, they have their time constraints. Um, so you know they're not gonna they're not gonna be a perfect fit for everybody. And then when we say twenty five thousand over versus two hundred thousand over, a little different from what I heard on the phone the other day. Like I thought we weren't really increasing the scope. I thought the twenty five thousand is more of would be not 
Okay, I'll ask the question this way. If, if you take the lowest bidder um, and you look at what we approved at the town meeting, how much were the budgets over? 25000 or or much higher than 200000 On the base bid, 25000 25000 okay. But there was bid alternates that totaled roughly 500000 okay. Can we explain that to the group sure. so we can understand? Because it... I, are you increasing the scope of the project? Or yeah, so see, that's what that's what people need to understand. So I, I guess a, a quick, simple way to describe it is um, alternates. Uh, the word alternate's not a synonym for the word option. Um, it's a bid alternate, but not a scope alternate. These are important scope items. Uh, the we elected as a team to put them in as bid alternates, and sometimes that's that's a strategy. Um, I've used it. I've not used it. Uh, but sometimes it's a it's a strategy that's employed to basically try to separate certain items and provide some some budget flexibility. So, so but these items were in the original scope. Yeah, oh yeah. So yeah. they were in the original. No, they scope. weren't. They weren't cost. stuff that we we came up with. Right. In the so if they were in the original said, scope, I wouldn't say your low bid was twenty five thousand over. I would say it was two hundred thousand over. I mean, you, you could. I mean, that's. I'm just trying to be transparent. Yeah, no, and that's why we're pursuing that. So. To me, to me, if I'm if I'm watching that where that video gets posted, and I haven't done any of this, and I hear bid alternates, I'm hearing the schools want to increase the scope by one hundred seventy-five thousand yeah, no, dollars. Yeah. It's no, more of that's right. It's, it's more. A good of, that's a fair question. It is. I just yeah, yeah, it's a very good clarification. Okay. It's not. They're not. That's not like Steve said. It wasn't eleventh hour like. Ooh. But the we base, these the base you, technically you know? was twenty-five over. But yep. you guys earmarked these four, five, six items that you knew. Nine. Nine items that yep. you knew, you know, depending on how much they cost, maybe we prioritize depending on where That's the total exactly So right. it's a, it was right. a strategy to try to be smart about how do we lower the, the price if possible or lower the scope if possible. So apples to apples with what the town thought they were voting on, it's 200 over. So there's nine bid alternate items. If you didn't do any of those, it'd be twenty-five thousand over. But you think those items are important enough that that you want to go for the all nine items? So one clarification. Yes. All nine items were five hundred thousand dollars. If you would add up all nine items, it's five hundred thousand dollars, close to five hundred thousand dollars. The, the lower bidder yep. came in five hundred thousand over the scope that the town meeting had signed off. Correct. Those, those yeah. nine alternates were five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So oh, I mean, okay. roughly, when you're talking about approving a budget in. May of 2017 and opening a bid in February of 2018. Yeah, we came we came in at about approximately a six percent variance total max. Right. Um, which I, I would and we're not even seeking that as far as execution uh, at contract uh, approval time. Uh, was it so the drawings that you went out to bid on? Uh, why was it not time to get those drawings more specific before you did it? Just to educate the. No, they they were they were plenty specific. Um, well, it was a good cost estimate last May. Yeah, I mean it was at, at that time, and, and of course, um, you know, people that are employed in the cost estimation field, they're they're employing strategies into their work to account for that time projection. Um, you know, because they know it's going to be springtime 2018 when the the work hits the street. And they're trying to predict market trends. They're trying to predict what the what the budget of the scope is going to be. And you know, at this point, we we had a variance of six percent, which I I don't really think is 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 quite you know off target. I mean, of course, we'd like to see it the other way, but when, when you consider all the factors, I don't I don't think it's it's. Uh, so all the nine items, how many are you? For the two hundred thousand, do you get of the nine? So of the nine, and Steve can elaborate on this further. When you do it from this, when you take the alternate strategy, when you go with that strategy, uh, you have to rank them. You have to rank all of them like you know. Yeah. Here's what we think: one through nine, right? Mm -hmm. And so the five hundred thousand would be all nine. But we certainly don't have the bandwidth we know to do that. Um, and so we're looking at the first two alternates. Can I ask what those first two alternates are? Yep. Sure. So they're one for each project, and they're uh, basically the the control systems for the new HVAC systems. It's all the electronics that the... Right, because if yeah, you have a new HVAC system... Yeah. Yeah. Because both HVAC old. systems in both buildings are excess of 20 years old. They don't even make, make the units anymore. We would be literally hoping to, you know, find junkyard, you know, processors and repurpose them in our building from another customer. That's what the vendor would have to do. 
So there, I mean, it's it's like it's PC technology, but it's 20 years old. So picture that. It's 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 beyond unsupported. So those two alternates together around 175 plus the 25,000 that yeah. was originally over get you to the 200. How, how much um, buffer do you have in that budget the contingency fund? And is it possible to move the contingency fund to zero and then? Fund that later if there's an overage. Another good Could question. You we debate that. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it at school committee. Uh, it's 150 per school, 150,000 per school is in the contingency. Steve can talk to. We had this conversation with our OPM. That was actually one of the questions that came up. And actually, that's good for the FinCom to know as well. The, uh, the next Monday's board of selectmen meeting. Um, the OPM will be coming uh, to that meeting. We'll be having a conversation with the board of selectmen as well. The same conversation that we're having here at FinCom tonight, just to share this information with our colleagues on the board of selectmen as well. We asked that very same question to the OPM, and you know his advice was not to do that. And I'll help let Steve explain why. Yeah, I mean essentially the the own, we call it the owner's contingency, one hundred fifty thousand per project, um, which is not a lot considering what we're doing. Um, that's going to be basically managing unknowns, unforeseens, uh, and in projects this big, you know there will certainly be that. Existing um, conditions. Yes. That you yeah, I mean, you know, we from the outside. You know, we did infrared surveys of the roof, but how much how much of the roof deck is rotted? You're not actually going to know until you rip it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and so that's all done in discovery, and that's and that's a piece of financial management that that is ongoing throughout the project through change orders. Yeah. Um, the change orders can go both ways. They can go deduct or they can go they can go cost. It, 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 you know, we have to start the project with July one and get it done. Before the end of August, we'll, we'll be in before July one. Um, we'll be we'll be mobilizing in May. In the in the discussion on town floor last year, was that contingency estimated to be three hundred k or a higher number? No, it was. It was it, it's always, we exactly. haven't changed that. And so, right. for an assumption, is that a middle of the road assumption, or are we? Are, is that about as low as it can go? No, I, I don't think it's it's cut to the bone. I think it's pretty much an industry best practice. Okay. Kind of doing that. So what we were talking about for price on town meeting floor last year, there was this existing condi conditions contingency mm -hmm. built in, but there was also a contingency effectively for price escalation due to the time lag. Not a contingency so much as or a projection. It was it was projected in. Right. There, was, they, there was something there, yeah. however you want to look at when it. When they built that projection a year ahead so of time, they, as they, Steve said, they knew that they were going to the street in 18. So they put in some percentage for that. Yeah. And I mean, then there was another six percent on top of that. Yeah, versus, you know, if we went to the to the street in July of twenty seventeen, it would have been a it would have been a different number. Yeah. Although so, they would have hedged because you weren't gonna start construction July exactly. of two thousand seventeen. Right. Well I'm just so, you know, I'm just saying yeah. they, they did put in that that, you know, eight month, nine month, you know, yeah. buffer. They put in it's something they hoped was reasonable, and it turns out it wasn't enough. Is a lower bidder contractor a reputable firm? Is it is it like uh, somebody who's building skyscrapers? This is a small job, or is it somebody who builds houses and this is a massive job, or is it a good fit? Right. Um, we believe it. We believe it's a good fit. I've actually worked with this company before. Um, our our uh, administration building, the Aaron Wood School. Um, we renovated that two years ago, and this contractor did the work. Um, so we have recent experience with them. They do a lot of MBTA work. They do a lot of mass port work. Um, they do a lot of municipal work. Uh, they do private work. So um, they're a rounded firm. Um, you know, we, we feel they're capable of, of doing the jobs. Uh, we have a lot of reputable subs that are, that are the, um, the, the winning sub bidders in the, in the filed subcategories. And then for the categories that fall below the filed sub bid thresholds, the general contractor will be responsible for buying out those those scopes of work at his own you know direction. Has the bid already been awarded with the two alternates? Um, no, as far as a formal contract, no. That's the selection. Yeah, they they approve a notice to award, and, and then that's what that we will look at. Mike or Karen, any more questions on that before we ask about the funding? No. As far as the prices. Just explain in detail about how you fund this out of FY 18's budget. Sure. So I think this is we were talking about a few minutes ago uh, within special education uh, budget uh, for students that you think you'll have uh, and that 
will be in the district. And there are some cases where um, that works out in a way that that student stays in the district, and there are times when that student may move to a different district. And we've had a case uh, this year within special education where uh, we had a student who we had budgeted for, um, and that student uh, did not arrive at our doorstep. And so there are, we had a favorable circumstance in terms of money that was budgeted for a student that um, there was every intention that he would be in our school system, and he was here actually for a short amount of time, and um, is now in a different district. And so there's that piece. And How much of it is that? That's about 150 or so. So in last year's uh, one-time special ed estimate of 179, roughly 50 of that is not happening. So 29 is happening. But in this year's estimated 230 for one-time sped, this person's this person is not in that number. Correct. It's, those are other assumptions to get to that number. That's exactly right. Yeah. And the remaining 50 is, um, you know, Steve is going to basically enact um, a freeze in, in some capacity to, you know, hold our spending so we can um, move forward with uh, funding these alternates. Well, those things that are frozen need to be funded for next one? These are be FY18 things. FY18 items. So, so the priority of the school committee, number one, is getting the envelope of projects done. Since you need both buildings, one for both last year, we have the funding. Two is maintaining the class side as much as possible, even though the one's a little higher than you want. And then three is the longer term stuff. That yes. You're working on the plan. Yeah. There's a team working on that plan right now. So as far as turn backs in this year either to sprinkle on technology or textbooks or turn back to the town or prepay some of next year's extraordinary spend, <coughs> which would help next year's budget. No. How much of turn backs did you have in FY17? I don't remember that number. Stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the OPM will be um, joining us at Board of Selection uh, to provide a much more detailed analysis and explanation of you know, project and scope and, and all these different items uh, we've talked about tonight. you know in advance about what you're yeah. digging into. Right. At least these buildings aren't a hundred plus years old and never been touched. Right. So probably there aren't surprises. Fingers Maybe. crossed. Yeah. It's yeah. just a question of if there was a leak in a, in a place, how far did it run mm -hmm. before you got it? What happens if they open up and there's mold everywhere yeah. or something? I mean, it was yeah. actively raining again yeah. last week in the store library during the book fair. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's what the contingency would come into yeah. into play and something like that. Right? Yeah. I just, you know, I just want to say in regard to Steve and, and Katrina, I appreciate the email from that sent to Steve today, recognizing um, him just in the sense of I've worked in a lot of school districts and to have a director of facilities that's an engineer by background and by trade. Um, is a huge value add to the three towns, Topsfield, Boxer, and Middleton. That's not always the case. And Steve's mind works in a very sequential and logical way that an engineer's mind works. And I just think, um, from a perspective of being in good hands, we're in very good hands with Steve at the helm of these projects. He has led uh, two roof projects in Boxford, one roof project in Middleton. Two in Boxford, one in Middleton? And one in Middleton. And so he has the full confidence of. Uh, specialist. Everybody around this table, I mean, at least from the school committee end of things. Yeah. 
So just that engineering background and, and his experience with projects like these and the, and the management of them, uh, they've been very successfully led. I've gone back and looked at the history of some of these other projects, being the newer superintendent here, and they've all been very well managed. So just a, a quick attaboy to Steve because he does a great job. That makes a big difference. It does. It ends up saving you because change orders kill you. Absolutely right. <laughs> so which one's your favorite building? <laughs> <laughs> the next one. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming in and Thank giving you. us the clarifications and, and trying to be as creative to deliver the best schools as possible with the limitations we have. We appreciate your support. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. have to revote fire and revote the pension and revote the debt. Right? And then revote the salary. And probably tonight is not the night to do that because we can do the schools, but that's a long list, so it's not going to save us much time. Okay. Yeah, Every, we can we can certainly vote the school budget. Let's do it. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of the number. Two. Oh, right here. Yeah, but it's two hundred seventy dollars different than what's on your model. Oh, it is two hundred seventy-six. Yeah, because the sheet that they just handed out. Right. You see how it says. It says 810347. One, That's yep. what's in the model. Yep. You see how below it says 281176? Mm -hmm. yeah. But where they where they did their cutting on the, on the it says 280900. Right. So it's it's 810347 plus the delta between those two. Oh, so you want to take it's 276 two less. Right. Oh, and that's yeah, mm -hmm. so just 8108 minus 81083. Yep. Okay, so I move to uh, make a motion for positive action on the elementary school budget inclusive of um, $8,108,071, which is the guideline number we gave plus the uh, estimated FY19 extraordinary special ed cost of $230,731. Uh, possibly to be superseded in a future meeting. That's what I was just about to say. Yes. Possibly to be superseded in a future meeting. Second. Discussion? Discussion? Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so cook that into the model. It's okay. $276. Okay. I try. Okay. <laughs> I try. That's good. You're, you're amazing. So, uh, you're amazing. Maybe I'll double count it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I suppose we could vote the MASCO operating and debt budgets. Or we could wait for Dana to be here and make you know, the motion. I think it makes sense to wait to talk to Dana. Yeah. yeah, that's a quick one. Yep. Also. Okay, and so those are the remaining omnibus budgets, and we still have to vote the water department operating budget. Right. We got a new budget on Thursday last week. Oh, okay. I'm not sure I've seen that.
down to two years so the ramp up for fiscal year 2019 and 2020 is now up around 28 percent instead of 20 percent um, after 2000 fiscal year 2020 it's supposed to drop down to zero to one and a half, one half percent somewhere in that range but that's a big part of it and also what Catherine said that they really have the uh, if you look to the NY the unanticipated emergency fund line near the bottom of page two it's actually come down from 375000 to 300000 uh, And they, they added an additional 10000 to the enterprise reserve fund. But, but it's mostly driven by the fact it's been condensed and uh, from three years to two years and the unanticipated emergency. Yeah. They dropped the band interest a little bit. Okay. The Wall Street Journal had an excellent article about water rate, water rate increasing nationwide because of all the problems in the area. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it had the charts just off the chart about it. I emailed myself to email it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have a. I, I haven't email. checked that email yet. I didn't do that yet. <laughs> so we have an electronic subscription. I can print it yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah, it's a good article. Okay. It resonates with what we hear. It's nice to know we have a company. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me get that. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> My wife, she doesn't have to be that enough for me. It's not in the van interest. It, you're right, Lou. It's totally in unanticipated emergency yeah. and enterprise reserve. Okay. So that's the big difference. Um, I also know that there's a, I believe the number is 25,000. I didn't write that number down. They have to do the tank inspection. That should be a separate capital item. It's 30,000. Yeah, it's 30,000. 30,000. 30, and that's, that's mandated every five years. So that's a separate yeah. item. Exactly. Yeah, that got voted last week. Yeah. 30,000 for the water. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it, pretty much. Everything else is. Uh, everything else increased or decreased <coughs> appropriately you know, within guidelines. Mm -hmm. So the big, the big jump is the water treatment plant. Um, and the anticipated emergency. That's what basically what that money is. So. And Catherine, the, 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 I know you sent me an email. I asked this question earlier, but I didn't get to check it before I came to that. The, the transfer out of expense, 850000 in yeah, at last year at the June special town meeting, they moved um, 850000 from their retained earnings into the water treatment plant facility. Mm -hmm. So it was a way just to reduce it. It's, it's a $10 million project. They're borrowing $9 million. They took the 8.5, and they took um, 300000 from existing projects, too. So it just reduces the cost. Yeah. Well, it's really yeah. such a big swing in such a short period of time. I, I think it's about the, the, the timing of when they're yeah. going to, to bond. Okay. So my understanding is they're doing two years instead of three. Okay. 
and originally there was a five-year ramp up plan, so you know the, right. the plan was to go up 20% each year. I'm, um, I'm not exactly sure right. maybe you can illuminate why why it was shifted up from three years to two years now. There were uh, several years into the In terms of how long it was going to be on. So the ban would be the short-term interest versus the long-term. And the goal right now, <coughs> still tentative though, is to do a ban, possibly a nine-month ban from May to March of 2019 and then in March of 2019 to go out to bond for the, the, the whole gamut of everything basically. Um, there's also discussion about holding off on the water and still dragging that out for another year. It's just a, a, a way to kind of control um, spikes um, and we're working with a financial advisor to determine the best route to, in terms of how to handle that. But originally we were going to go out to bid in the fiscal year 2020. Now it's fiscal year 2019. Is what we're thinking. And go out to we'll bond. Go out. I'm sorry. It's trying bond. Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. And we were going to do the band in March, but they weren't ready. Um, they had enough. There's some existing band money that's already been taken out, and we're looking just to be on the rest of it. Um, but in terms of meeting the the time frames, in terms of how much needs to be spent by bond council. We weren't hitting those because of the weather and this, um, and I'm not going to explain as well, but this is something in terms of how, when they can um, pave a certain area before they can continue working. So it, it's a, we're t working closely with Greg to find out exactly what money he needs at what time, and uh, we may have to hold off some of the, the band event, you know, just, but if not, we're going to go for forward with it. Forward in 2019. Yeah. Are you going to be talking with the financial advisor this week? Should we hold off on on this and put on it on Monday? Um, we won't be talking to the financial advisor this week, and I don't think it's going to make a difference anyway because the other part of, of what Greg is doing with in terms of managing his budget <coughs> is he's trying to, to control the rate, to keep it within a certain percent. To, to instead of running it and doing that, yeah. he's... Yeah, to which is he's been doing over the out. years, yeah. actually. So, um, you know, if, if they if they're making decisions. The the water commissioners in terms of how they how they're managing this for like you know before this project even came online. So we're not going to have any additional information. Um, so when I did talk to Greg, you know, he is. They're trying to estimate what we're going to do for, for zero in on a number for the, the water treatment plant work. I don't think it's an exact science. Uh, I'm trying to trying to have a gradual increase in the rate instead of huge steps. Yes, but but you know when we first started talking about the water treatment plant, there was a five-year ramp up at 20 percent each year. And now it's essentially a four-year ramp up, and so to make up for uh, that last year, losing that last year, the ramp up is about 20%. Losing the last year part way through the ramp up. Yes. So the ramp was set headed this way, and now it's. Yes. We can certainly ask right. Greg if you would take him out on Thursday if we would feel better having a discussion with him. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that's good. And there will be more of us here, too. Okay. I agree. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't affect where we are in the tax levy, but it affects the water rates. Yep. Understanding the trade off. So, do we have a, a uh, is the police chief coming at 7 30? Should I ask Greg to come in at yeah. 7 30? Uh, well, I think we were between fire and police, we were thinking 7 and 7 30, so it's break and do 8. North Shore again. We should probably work for Dana. That's that's another we're given. But right. Okay. You guys took care of a lot. Um, we have the rest of the list over guidelines. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just going down through the articles. Oh, sorry. Um, the Town Facilities Repair and Maintenance Fund, the Hearst House Exterior Building Repairs and Painting, the Records Management Document Conversion, which is separate from the uh, Public Records Request Management software, and then the Stabilization Funds and OPEN, we sort of have to wait. And the zoning bylaws. Yeah, I think Kelly might have a, give an update on the records management. Yes. I uh, um, what I was going to offer is I can come to Thursday's meeting to give you an update and an updated warrant article on that. We're reducing, we're scaling that back. I just needed to talk mm -hmm. with our consultant to see exactly how we should word it. But it'll be significantly less and the scope is going to be much narrower. So um, if it fits your schedule, I can certainly, the board is meeting again on Thursday at 5, and if you guys are meeting at 7, I can meet with the board, yeah. finalize everything, and then give that you a final sense. number at 7 when I meet with you. Yeah, or, well, after, yeah, whatever. They'll be sprinkled in there somewhere, depending yeah. on how long we we're, we're, we will be. We will be well beneath the $300,000 guidelines that were given by the capital, uh, in the capital guidelines. So we're hoping that the board will then, the FinCom will have some opportunity to maybe talk about other ways you can either pay down either some of the, um, the debt yep. or the um, or put additional funding into the capital stabilization fund. So it'll be a, it'll be a good um, opportunity to sort of tie all those loose ends together and I can present you with any updates to all the Warren articles by then as well. Thank you. Thank you. On that, do you do you think you'll have a number for the Article 17, the town facilities repair? Yes. Okay. Yes. For yeah, Thursday we'll tie as well. everything That'll together. all tie together. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay. So anything else? Uh, marijuana establishments, all the zoning bylaws, the citizen petitions. We should probably have more people here. There's Eric has Eric's got the eye on two of them. Um, you're still trying to get a hold of the charter review. Yeah, um, I really haven't had much success with that yet um, to talk about that, so I don't have the recommendation yet. Okay. Street acceptances? <laughs> Let's see what we see. Well, street acceptances? That's an easy one. Yeah? That's withdrawn. All three. Oh. We're glad for next way, year. Shock and awe. Woo! <laughs> okay. You know, you feel on the synergy? Yeah, three things done. Is, Boom. The, is the board's meeting on the selectmen's meeting on Thursday for uh, updating the warrant? Will we have an updated warrant by Thursday night? Yes, I, I, I we made a number of changes today. I'll make changes today. <coughs> and we'll have it to you by tomorrow. Thank you. Okie dokie. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, it's Hearst House, LT. Hearst. Hearst. Yeah. Oh, we're eliminating that reference. Hearst. No. It's, it's, uh, it's where they it's the for the old hearse with, drawn by yes, uh, horses. Horse. Right. Yes, huh? a black horse. Yes, a hearse. Well, we're calling it a barn building now, so, oh, okay. you know, we're less horses. morbid. Yeah. Okay. Was it Harold and Mom? <laughs> yes. around in the hearse? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Just didn't touch it. <laughs> I got it too. Right? <laughs> you never knew about Tom's you know. We have a Hearst house. <laughs> yeah, or there's Patty Hearst. Or, yeah, whatever. Okay. So that one is Okay, so that covers all the warrant articles we can do anything about tonight, I think. So now we're. Excuse me, off to the over guidelines about and so you guys took care of some yeah. last week. The one comment I would make is the five thousand dollars for the selectman special legal services and oh if it happens to run more, oh just ask for a reserve fund transfer. Well <laughs> knowing that if if might probably go over. You can't exactly pretend that it was 
unanticipated, but I suppose we can hope that it's not needed or that there's turn backs that it can be moved at town meeting. I think that's what people are special thinking. town meeting. Yeah. So there was the audit services. Yeah, that one. I'm just going down in order. <clears throat> that one, there was a question on how much of that's contract. Yeah. So, I, Captain's here, she can comment, but um, let's see. So 1500 is not contract. So it's 4100. So 2600 of it is contract of the increase. 1500 is not. But what? What are we missing if we don't spend the fifteen hundred? As I understand, it's uh, it's I don't want to abridge it too much, <laughs> but it is it's a very helpful guy that we might need to bring in for more consulting. Is there so it's actually just a a buffer, I would say. Okay, so you abridged it too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Okay. <laughs> It's Dick Hingston of Hingston and, and Justin Hingston, the Yale Site Consulting Firm. They, he's kind of helped out with different things. Like when the, the, before I started, there was an issue with the trust fund. Things that are definitely above and beyond the financial statements. He has to keep a line in terms of um, making sure there's no conflict of interest with anything that he's helping with. He's helped with the, um, he was a wealth of knowledge when we had the S&P meeting to upgrade the, um, the bond rating. Um, he has the, he's been doing the financial audits on and off for a number of years. Oft times, just you know, you want to try to rotate auditors and stuff. But there's not a lot of people that the accountant can go to to ask questions. And especially with you know, um, we have a DOR rep that's brand new, and he's a lot cheaper than any legal services. And he'll, he'll he's a person standby for advice um, on you know what would you do if type questions, and they come up a lot. <laughs> So it's just, it, there's, it, the, there's always been a little bit of a buffer in that account. Um, the contract is going up slightly. The contract will be going up over the years, you'll see, just because of what's happening with the Gadsby. Um, if you just even look at the financial audit, it's gone from 41 pages to about 79 pages in the last, the last three um, audits that we've had. Um, they, they're going to be changing Gadsby's again. The, all the, the OPEB is now incorporated with the financial statements. He's working with um, Parker, who is the person who does the actuarials. Um, to, you know, to fill those requirements. The job of the accountant and the person who does the financial statements are two completely separate jobs. Um, Dick is someone who's worked with DOR, he's worked, he works in a, a, a lot of municipalities, and he's just a um, wealth of information. You should know, um, it's possible that we'll be going to SNP again um, at some point in the next, in the coming fiscal year. Well, the next month, and then in the next year. <coughs> There'll be at so least two more times. Every yeah. time we because the, the because the amounts are so amount. large right now, right? Yeah. And there hasn't been a lot of borrowing that's been going on in this town for a number of years. So that's why, and you know, one we want to maintain the rating that we have, um, and, and you know, it's you know, it, it's all volatile. But the other thing is too is we also have the chance of going up even another rating, which you know, you know, impacts our, our our interest rates, which are probably doing bad things. <laughs> He did, um, the auditor did sit with us as we did our telephone interview with S&P. Mm -hmm. He was there to help us prep. He was there for the telephone call and certainly afterwards to make sure that we, um, you know, there's a short period of time that they'll give you their initial analysis. Mm -hmm. and you only have three hours to get back to them because it's a very rigid process. And he was on the phone with us when we realized that there was something in that report that didn't seem to quite make sense. He was on the other line helping us to figure that out, and that did essentially make the difference between one of our ratings being stable mm -hmm. and changing that to solid and good. So to me, the $1,500 for this particular service, I think it's well warranted um, for whatever that opinion is, but it's it's something we could definitely see in, in our uh, ability to get that S&P rating even perhaps even better, but certainly to have his guidance at the table, 